So now we will try to use the principles of of science of mold filling as well as the gating layout to design the actual gating channels and how to design those sizes of the gating channels. Remember we want to achieve controlled filling of the mold cavity okay, in a complete smooth and uniform manner that is the idea of the gating system design. So in this part we start off with the first basic question is what is the correct filling time and rate of a casting? What is the correct filling time and rate of a casting? Okay. Then we will see how to control that filling time by what is called as a choke and we introduced the concept of choke in the previous lesson. And then how do you from the choke how to design the gating elements and finally what is the effect of gating on solidification and thereby look at the relative size of the gating elements and the casting. Question number one here to you is what do we want? We want to have fast filling or a slow filling. You can say fast filling yes of course otherwise we will have cold shuts and misruns. It will not fill completely. Before it fills completely if I am filling very slowly it will solidify. So I want fast filling. Do you want slow filling? Again answer is yes because I want to make sure turbulence is minimized, erosion is minimized, oxidation is minimized. Can I have, can you have both? Like Kalidasa, Kalidasa. No, 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 I want to have both. Here there is no optimum. I do not want the middle part. I want both. Like Kalidasa said, what Devi said, you want wealth or you want knowledge. He said, I want both. He did not say, I want half of this, half of that, right? He took both. Okay. So, big question is, can we have both? And the answer is actually yes. You can have fast filling and slow filling both, but with a, how to do it is in a smart way. I achieve fast filling by having a high filling rate. How do I do that? I can pour more metal per second. I can have more number of gates to fill the casting. I can have bigger gates to fill it at a faster rate. So I am achieving a faster filling by that. How do we achieve slow filling? Yes, I do that also. I want to have low velocity. How do I do that? I put a low pressure head. I design my choke carefully and I make sure my gating ratio is designed in such a way that the flow through the gates is, is low. The flow velocity through the gates is low. And in the worst case, if I have everything else not there, I can always put a filter through the gating system to slow it down further. Okay. So I can achieve both. But now of course we have to learn how to use all the elements to achieve both the goals in a nice way. So how we start off from what is called as the ideal filling time. So every casting has an ideal filling time. When I say ideal filling time, it is not a single point but a range of values inside which, within which it gives me good quality castings. It depends on several parameters. Okay. Equation looks little difficult but actually it is not that strange. On the left side, we have the main design parameters. Casting weight, bigger the casting, the more time I can give it to fill, number one. Number two, my average wall thickness. Thicker the casting, I can take more time to fill. Thinner the casting, I need to fill it faster before it freezes. Okay, so thickness also, with increasing thickness, I have increasing filling time. Third is my, um, not here, on the other side you will see fluidity. Where is the fluidity coming? LF. Okay. My higher the point temperature, higher the fluidity, I can give it longer time to fill because it does not freeze early. And then I have several factors. All these are size factor and power factors and weight factors. These factors can be determined for different metal process combinations. What we put here is the normal values for ferrous castings. Non-ferrous also we can put K0 as 1.5 and by and large you can take some size factors. Okay, in, if you look at the casting book which is with you, you have the values for different metal combinations. But this is, these are derived from various books and papers and all that. We are still trying to figure out what are the correct values of factors from different foundries. But this is a generalized equation which gives you the ideal filling time. Now, from the filling time, I can also determine the pouring rate or filling rate in this case, which is nothing but the weight of the casting. Remember, it is total weight of the casting including my feeders and gating system. Okay, divided by the filling time that gives me pouring rate. Now here is where we have a small example quickly. So if you take casting weight as 3.8 and weight of feeders as 2.4, average wall thickness as 20, if you plug this equation into the whole thing, you get a filling time of 2.2 seconds. Casting weight is 3.8 kgs, filling time is 2.2 seconds. So average pouring rate for the total metal in the mold 
if you take total weight is 6.9 divided by 2.2 is about 3.1 kg per second. Now, how do you know this Boeing rate is right or wrong? Fortunately, there are some nice graphs available and you can use these graphs as starting point. Okay. For ferrous castings, we have a graph which relates the casting weight and wall thickness with the filling rate. So, if you see the green dot in that, that is our previous casting. Casting weight and the filling rate is about, should be about 1 kg per second. What we got earlier was 3.1 kg per second. So, now I can do a little bit of adjustment and say, okay, maybe this time is too short. This time is too short. What I should have is typically about 1 kg per second. So, I can now readjust my time and say, maybe I should not fill in 2 seconds, maybe I should fill it in about 6 seconds. So, I have a little bit of back and forth to digest the filling time and filling rate. Similarly, for, a, for my non-ferrous castings, aluminum castings, we have this graph relating the casting weight and your thickness to your filling rate. So, you can use this filling time equation and filling rate equation back and forth to come to a reasonable value of a starting point for your filling time of a casting. Okay. Once I decided the filling time of a casting, okay, now I question is how do we control that? So, we go back to our tap equation. So, if I want to fill the wash basin in a particular amount of time, I open the tap to a particular amount of degree and I can pre-calculate that, how much to open to fill the whole thing in a particular amount of time. So, how do I use that? I have my choke. Choke is the smallest cross section area in the entire gating system. Okay. And what I do is, I can look at velocity through the choke is nothing but equal our root over 2 g h multiplied by my coefficient discharge or coefficient of loss coefficient. And choke area is nothing but area of choke is equal to volume of the casting which is weight by density divided by my velocity through the choke and the time of filling. So, if you use this equation, I can get my choke area, which is the smallest cross section area of the cap in the gating system. Once I know the choke area, it is very easy for me to decide the other areas because I have my gating ratio. Gating ratio is nothing but the ratio of the cross section area of the sprue, total runner and total gates. So, supposing in my my sprue is let us say cross section area is ratio, ratio is 1 and the middle one runner area is let us say is 2 and then the gate area let us say is 1.5. Between 1 and 2 and 1.5, 1 is the smallest area. So, whatever area I ca calculate from choke becomes same as my in this case sprue area. Once I know sprue area, I can calculate the runner area and gate area from the gating ratio. Okay. Of course, now question is which is really good, you know, which one is converging uh, channels or diverging channels or diverging converging channels. But we already kind of discussed that in the theory part, science part. We said diverging is little dangerous because although it slows down the velocity, it only it's theory. Sometimes you may have flow separation. So, you should have diverging, but again catch it back. So, the most ideal ratios also from John Campbell's uh, book and his experience, they say that do diverging converging, 1 is to 3 is to 2 or 1 is to 2 is to 1.5, where net expansion is there, but try and expand more and then come bring it back again. That is the follow, one, one way to follow this. If you go back to again literature in the in gating area, you get all kinds of ratios in the in the books saying ideal gating ratio is like this. Okay. But if you see by and large, cast iron which was which was at one point of time was acceptable with even with poor quality is which is not true anymore. By and large you want to slow down the velocity and people are trying that all the, all the, all the place. Especially in non-ferrous casting if you see aluminum, you see 1 is to 4 is to 4. Why are you doing that? Because high velocity in non-ferrous is even more dangerous than ferrous metals. If you remember I keep telling that the maximum critical velocity value is about 1 meter per second for ferrous, 0.5 meter per second for non-ferrous. So, with that no, 0.5, which is even more less than the ferrous, you should, unless you expand the gates much more, gate area much more, you cannot slow it down. So, gate area has to be much more than the sprue area. Now, look at the sprue design uh, guideline. We said that as the metal flows to the sprue, it speeds up. To, so, if you do not want any flow separation, you must reduce the sprue exit area, bot, sprue bottom area. How much to reduce? 
very simple. Again, a one v one is equal to a two v two, and v one is proportional to root over h one. So h one is the height of metal in the pouring basin. That is the head at the top of the sprue, and the total head h two at the bottom of the sprue. So these are a one h one is a one root over h one is equal to a two root over h two. If you know h one and h two, and if you know a two, which is the sprue bottom exit, that's a choke. You can calculate h one. And that leaves you the accurate value of uh, sprue diameters to prevent flow separation. Sprue well, it has only quick guidelines. They say it should be about twice the diameter of the sprue exit and about twice the height of the runner. So runner design we have already seen. We said that uh, a runner cross section area is only discussion point here. Most of runners are either uh, tall, so you have height of runner is. Let us say twice the width, or sometimes other way round. Runner is wide, okay. Width is uh, twice the depth. But I am beginning to understand to uh, to argue that maybe we should have runners square cross section or rounded cross cross section or even a round cross section, because what is the logic of of runner? Runner's job is to take liquid metal from the sprue to the gates as fast as possible, as short time as possible, as shortest path as possible. And also with minimum heat transfer, because more heat transfer means I have to either increase my superheat or I have to worry about cold shards in the casting. So if I want to minimize my heat loss and flow loss, I think best cross section is circular cross section, and the next best is square with a generous fillets. Okay, and we are talking about combination of sprue, uh, the runner and the gate on the top with that combination again, and we want the sprue to fill up completely. If you want the sprue is wide. Even before sprue is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Even before the runner is uh, filled completely, if the runner is shallow. Some metal can start entering the gates. But I don't want a too deep a runner either. So all compromise, if you look together, I would recommend a square runner with rounds or a even a rounded runner if possible. Minimize flow loss, minimize heat loss. Okay, that's the main point I want to say here. Now gate design. Now we come to the last critical part. What is it? The gate area or gate cross sections. And this is is definitely important here. One is we can get the total gate area from the choke area and the gating ratio. Once we have the choke area, and once we have the gating ratio, we can calculate the total gate area. And we also know the number of gates from the gating layout. So if you divide the total gate area by number of gates, you get the individual gate area. That part is fine. But also we have another criteria that my total gate velocity, my final metal velocity of the gate should not be more than one meter per second for ferrous castings. How do I do that? If supposing my velocity I find is more than that, I can again start increasing my number of gates, which means I'm effectively increasing my gating ratio. That is one way. Other thing I have to worry about is okay. Let's say now I know finally my gate area should be so much centimeter square or millimeter square. How do I now distribute that? Should I have a square gate? Should I have a rectangular gate? What is the logic for my gate cross section design? Okay, you will find mostly gates are designed with H by W as 0.5. I am saying that is no longer that holy. What really decides is what is the local cross section, local thickness of the casting itself. Supposing I have a thin gate at a thin section of a casting. Okay, first of all, a thin Part of a casting, I have two presents two problems. If a metal flows through a thin part of the casting, the metal will cool down before it reaches the other parts of the casting, which is not a good idea. And second thing is, when I try to fettle this gate, my part of the casting can also break. So I don't want a thin thin gate. Definitely not connected to a thin wall of the casting. Okay, so I go to other side, and I say, put okay, what about a thick gate at a thick part of the casting? I put a thick gate. It's a square gate. Gate area is constant, so my, now I'm playing with the gate length and width, cross section area. So I put a now a thick square gate to a thick part of the casting. What happens in that point? I can create a hot spot there, and I can get have an under gate porosity there. Okay, so I try something different. I say, what about a thick gate? I'm sorry, I said a thick gate at a thin section is a bad thing. Okay, what is happening is a My hot metal is cooling down as I pass through a thin part of the casting, and thick gate at a thick part of the casting creates a hot spot there itself. Two thicknesses together, hot metal, you are going to have a hot spot. Okay, so what is the final solution here? How about a thin gate 
relatively thick part of the caster. As long as the gate thickness, which is in this case, let us say, gate height, is less than half the wall thickness of the connected part of the casting, my hotspot creation is not much. Is it clear? My gate thickness should be less than half of the local wall thickness. Then I do not create a hotspot. It is also easy to fettle. It will also not cool down the metal too much as it passes through the casting. So all those considerations can be taken care by. If you once you have the gate area, you make the design the gate cross section width into depth such that it will satisfy this the criteria. No hot spot, no cooling down of the metal as it passes through the casting and number three, fettling should be reasonably easy. Finally, if you are not able to achieve that filling uh, velocity as you mentioned, your ultimate solution is filters. But filters are always the last solution. If possible, try to get clean metal from the runner extension and slag traps and all that. If you want to re reduce the velocity, which is other things that a filter will do, try to do it by reducing the head increasing your gate cross section area, increasing number of gates, do all those things. Because filters, although they can slow down the metal, okay, and although they can trap the slag, what happens when once the pores are getting filled up and slag is continuing to come? So it, it, it changes your flow rate. It is uncontrollable parameter. And second thing is as metal emerges from the filter, it is becoming multiple streams, which is increasing surface area. So filters are like last resort. If you can manage without filters, I would recommend that. Because this is something which is difficult to understand how filters really work. And do they create these two problems as I mentioned to you. The, one of the last things in this lesson is about how about vertical gates. If you have vertical gates and you have two gates at the different heights, you have to kind of make sure the flow rate is reasonably equal from them. And that you can easily do by, you know that the height of metal is different and root of 2G has gives me the velocity, I can adjust the gate area to make sure my velocity is reasonably constant, my flow rate is constant. Because velocity from the lower gate is more, I, I reduce the area of that. Velocity of top gate is less, I increase its area, so I balance out the flow rate by changing the areas of the gates. So I can do this trick in a vertical gating system. So finally, to summarize the gating design thing, what we did, our starting point is cast metal and the part model from which we get weight and wall thickness and so on. So we know the fluidity value from the metal temperature and metal. So from that we calculate the ideal filling time. Ideal filling time requires my casting weight, wall thickness and fluidity which is a function of temperature and, and composition. From that we calculate the average fill rate. Once you know average fill rate, I can calculate my choke velocity. Once I know choke velocity, I can calculate the choke area. And if I know my gating ratio and the gating cross section ratios, H by D ratios, I can calculate the remaining dimensions of the gating channels. That is overall my flow chart. You can say what is use of that, so much calculation, who is going to do in the foundry. But these are very easy to computerize. You can even write an Excel program to do this automatically. You just give the initial values, you can write a simple Excel program to do the things. And students can take out some of these projects again, position day also. Excel programs to do all kinds of calculations like this. Okay, so to summarize what we learned in the gating design was the starting point is, a, is an ideal filling time of the casting. And ideal filling time itself depends on weight and wall thickness and metal and temperature. And from ideal filling time, we decide the choke and gating ratio. From that, we design the gating channels and dimensions of that. If it is vertical gating, we also make sure flow rate is constant or reasonably uniform from the two gates. Okay. 